Good morning. Good morning. Uh, warm welcome to each one of you. It's a special privilege to have the Bishop of the Diocese and Bishop Emeritus here with us today. And then our guest of honor, too, right? Who's our guest of honor? Jesus. <laughs> But it's a pretty big day for Rapsky. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, true privilege of the year is to, to preach at this first Mass. And I'm going to talk about the readings and then we'll talk a little bit about Rapsky too. And I, I want you to think about this question. But what if somebody gave you a substantial amount of money? Some amount of money that had a little bit of weight to it. Something that you could do something with, right? I don't know, it was a different amount for different people. But I'm thinking of two or three hundred dollars, okay? So, <laughs> you have two or three hundred dollars. You could either save that money or you can spend it, right? Maybe even waste it on something. Say, hey, easy come, easy go. You could buy like an exercise bike and put clothes on it, right? Something like that. You waste it. Or you could save that money. But you'd save it for something, right? You wouldn't just save it to look at it. You'd save it for something. You have a purpose. You know, you have a much more valuable gift than $200. You have an immortal soul of inestimable value. You have an immortal soul and this gift has been given to every human being, the gift of life. And you know, we live in a broken world. We live in a world, and you don't need me to tell you that we live in a broken world, a world where sin and death reign. That's the world we live in. But you know what? Our life is not to simply be wasted. Our life is to be saved. Right? Have you been saved? Now you can start an argument with that question, you know? We're going to start an argument, start talking about how you get saved and if you're saved or not. But I'll tell you this. You have been saved by the Paschal Mystery, by the Incarnation, Suffering, Death, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord. And you have been saved for something. You have a purpose. Your life has a destiny. It has an end. It is a hope. And we celebrate that reality today by celebrating the ascension of the Lord. That's what we're celebrating today. I know Braxton thinks he's the special guest today. <laughs> but it really is that Jesus is the special guest. And it is Braxton's privilege, will be his privilege, to make Christ present for us in the Paschal mystery that we will celebrate. You know, have you been saved? Yes. But you've not simply been saved from hell. You have been saved for something. You have a destiny, a destination. You know, this past fall, I had the privilege to go to Fatima, Fatima in Portugal. And in Fatima in Portugal, Our Lady appeared to these shepherd children and she taught them a number of prayers. And one prayer that she taught them goes like this. She encouraged the children to say this between the decades of the rosary. Oh my Jesus, save us from the fires of hell and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Y'all ever heard that prayer before? See, we're saved from something and we're saved for something. You know what we're saved for? Now, we have a mission here on earth. And, you know, Braxton and I were talking this morning and he said something really beautiful. He said to me, he said, you know, Father Mike, I've waited so long. Here we are. Today, I get to begin the life that I was created to live. be a priest of Jesus Christ. To offer the Paschal mystery. 
participate in the mystery of the redemption, the salvation of the world. See, we've been saved through Jesus Christ, and Jesus gives us all a ministry and a mission and a part of that. And today we celebrate the last component of the Paschal mystery, the ascension. What does it mean to ascend? To ascend, to move upward, to succeed. The Christian doctrine of the ascension holds that Jesus ascended to heaven in the presence of the eleven following his resurrection, and he sits at the right hand of the Father in glory, and he intercedes for us. He's interceding for us right now. And that living Christ, Christ who is alive, resurrected from the dead, who lives today, Christ alive will descend to us on that altar at the power of the words of Braxton Nikes and the gift of the holy orders that were imparted to him yesterday. What a, what a great day, huh? A great day, but it's every day. It's every time we celebrate Holy Mass. We get to participate in the victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death. Why did he come? Why did Jesus come? You know, there's a lot of right answers to that question. I like to ask this question regularly during my homilies. Why did he come? I hope you have an answer. I hope you do. My favorite answer. There's a lot of right answers. My favorite answer is this. He's on trial before Pontius Pilate. And Pilate says to him, you are a king. And Jesus says, you say that I am a king. For this I was born. For this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The voice of Jesus Christ is the truth. That's my favorite answer. That's not the answer I want to talk about today. Braxton told me I can preach as long as I wanted to. <laughs> a warning that I could get out of roll today with this special gift of his ordination. Jesus came. Why did he come? To testify to the truth. He came for the Paschal mystery. I was thinking about quiz and back racks and see how the seminary did with this formation. Make him ask if you answer a few questions. So the Paschal Mystery. The Paschal Mystery is what we celebrate at Mass. Paschal. From the Hebrew word for the lamb that was sacrificed at the Passover meal. The Paschal lamb. So we celebrate the Paschal Mystery. And the Paschal Mystery is this. That Jesus Christ is the incarnate God. That He came down. He came and took our flesh. That He suffered for our sins. That He died. That He rose from the dead. Right? And that He did what? The last thing He did. He ascended into heaven. And that's the Paschal Mystery. And we celebrate the Paschal Mystery today. And you know, you weren't just saved from hell. You were saved for something, weren't you? To participate in your life in the Paschal Mystery and to anticipate your ascension into heaven, right? In Braxton, it will be your job to lead people through the Paschal Mystery to the gates of heaven. Saved from hell for heaven, right? Amen. Now, Braxton, I have some rules for you, okay? <laughs> you know, Braxton's going to our name of the golf. The bishop thinks I'm happy about that, Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> they might like him more than they like me. <laughs> so I'm already playing some rumors and things about him. <laughs> told the children at the elementary school because they already like him better than they like him. <laughs> How can I compete with a living cartoon character? You know? <laughs> so perhaps they're not allowed to like him better than me. Okay? That's rule number one. When I was here in Dito, 
Maximus active in the parish. You know, and one day he came to me, he said, Father Mike, I want to be the youth minister. Like, we have a youth minister. <laughs> Got two of them, Joe and Tasha, not youth minister. He says, no, I want to be the youth minister. I said, okay, you can be the youth minister. He says, no, I need a letter that says I'm the youth minister. <laughs> I said, now, he said, I don't want to do any work. I just want that title, you know? I got something to apply for, you know? So Braxton, my youth minister, then a seminary, and then a deacon, and now a presbyter, a priest, an elder, a priest of Jesus Christ. And you know, yesterday, we celebrated, yesterday we had his ordination. And yesterday, we also in the church, we remember, this is separate from the ordination, separate from the mass, but on the church calendar yesterday was the feast of St. Justin Martyr. Do you know that? You knew that, didn't you, perhaps? So, the feast of St. Justin Martyr. <laughs> And the word martyr means witness. That's what it means. It means witness. And it's a particular kind of witness. It's the people that witness to their faith in Jesus Christ by the shedding of their blood. That's what a martyr is. So yesterday was the feast of St. Justin Martyr. So Braxton was ordained a priest. Not, you know, you wonder, is that just a coincidence? Is that an accident? What does that say about his life and his priesthood? Know, whether he actually is a martyr or not, he's going to be a witness to the suffering, the resurrection, the death, and the ascension of Jesus. So that's, that's what he signed up for. And I believe that he knew what he was getting into. Becoming a priest is, I believe, and I say this, and I, I think that People need to hear this, and I bet you I'm speaking for Father Adam and our bishops, our other seminarians here. It's the greatest gift that God can give to You know, I spent years running away from the priesthood because I knew it meant laying down your life. Because I knew it. I, I just knew it. But I couldn't see the beauty on the other side of that. I couldn't see the light and the joy and the gift. I couldn't see that I was going to have a giant, beautiful family that loved me and wanted to take care of me, that wanted to encourage me. I couldn't see the privilege of journeying with people through the Paschal Mystery. I didn't see all of those things. All I saw was the hard parts. Braxton, I hope you don't just see the easy parts. I hope you see the hard parts too. Because while it is the greatest gift, we're all called to be witnesses. We're all called to be martyrs. I think if a man gets into the priesthood and he doesn't recognize the battle that he's fixing to face, he's going to get eaten up and spit out by demons. And we've seen that. Have we not seen that in our church? And so there is a battle to fight. And it is serious. And when I was ordained a priest, Y'all don't need to hear the whole story, but I tell you, I struggled. I struggled. I, I struggled greatly. And I said to people, pray for me. Pray for me. And I remember people telling me how they would pray for me. They would, sincere, honest. And people still today, when I got 
signed to Arlene in the Gulf after I left Edo, and I'm sure I told those of you from Edo here remember me saying, pray for me, right? Pray for me, that's what I want you. I promise you by an oath of obedience to my bishop that I will pray for you. You pray for me too, okay? And y'all pray for him. He needs it. He needs it. That's, you know, we all need it. We all need it. The Paschal Mystery. Anything special happening at Mass today? Bishop Brody, the second bishop of Biloxi, I remember him telling a story at a homily one time. He was at an all-girls Catholic school celebrating Mass when he was Father Brody. And he said one of the young ladies walked up to him and said, Father Brody, anything special happening at Mass today? You know, like, are we doing flowers to Mary? Are we blessing the rings? Are we doing this or doing that? Anything special happening at Mass today? And I remember Bishop Brody tell us the story. I wasn't there. He said, he looked at the young lady and he said, yeah, the creator of the universe is going to become incarnate on the altar for the salvation of the souls of the people present at the Mass and the whole world. That's special. Braxton and I have a little joke that's been going on for a while now. Quite a few years. Some of you remember the old show Kung Fu. Some of you don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but there was this show called Kung Fu. And in Kung Fu, there was the master, and he had a pebble, right? And he had his student who was always trying to snatch the pebble out of his hand. And he could never quite get the pebble. And he says, you know, when you learn more, then you can get the pebble. And so I always tell Braxton, I took out the pebble. <laughs> I still know more than you, okay? <laughs> I still got the pebble, Braxton. <laughs> but I remember a few years ago, Braxton came home happily from seminary. He's telling me something that he learned, right? I pretended like I already knew that. You know what I'm saying? Because he would have surely claimed to have the pebble out. We break a little piece off. 
and we drop it into the chalice. Because when our Lord died for our sins, His blood left Him, right? This is a Jewish concept that the life blood. And so the body and blood are separated in death. And then when we drop that little piece of the host into the blood of Christ, we remember that He came back to life. He, read he was reanimated. That the body and blood come together. And then, what's the last step of the Paschal Mystery? And then we hold the broken chap host over the chalice. And what are we remembering when we hold it up and we say, Behold, we don't say the Paschal Lamb, but it is the Paschal Lamb who suffered for our sins that we're going to eat. We say, Behold, the Lamb of God, right? Who takes away the sins of the Lord. And as we hold this reanimated, living Christ up before you, what are we remembering? The ascension. That's what Braxton told me. <laughs> I knew that. But I must have missed that class in seminary. <laughs> or skipped that chapter. But it's a beautiful truth, isn't it? And you know, Braxton, it's going to be your privilege to lead people through the Paschal Mystery. To remind them that they weren't just saved from something they were saved what? They were saved from heaven. And I hope we all live our lives in a state of grace. I hope we all live our lives anticipating our death. Not with fear and trembling, but with hope in the ascension. Confidence that we weren't just saved from something, we were saved for something.